So let us try to find the mean of x, given that x lies between 10 and 100, in the case that x is exponentially distributed with parameter 0 0.01. So what we want to find is the mean of g of x. No, the mean of x, given that x lies between 10 and 100. And we've already written up the definition for the conditional expectation here. And one of the first things we notice is in the denominator, here, uh, in the denominator we have the probability that x lies between 10 and 100. So we will try to figure that one out. And in the numerator, we have the mean of x multiplied by the restriction of x to the interval 10 to 100. So the mean of x multiplied by the restriction of x to the interval 10 to 100. Now, I will suggest that we tackle these two in, like, we tackle one at a time. So let us try to look at the numerator first. So the numerator. Let us look at that first. So what do we have in the numerator? We have the mean of the restriction of x to 10 to 100. And that, by definition, is given by the integral from 10 to 100 of x multiplied by the density of x where the density of x is given by the exponential density in the case that x is exponentially distributed. Did I just say exponential density? What I'm trying to say is the distribution of x is given by this expression here. <laughs> so we want to integrate from 10 to 100 over x multiplied by 0.01 multiplied by e to the minus 0 0.01 multiplied by x dx. And now we know that the density is only equal to this when x is greater than 0, but everything is okay because we're integrating on an interval where all the values are greater than 0. So what do we want to figure out here? Well, I have 0 0.01 out here, and then inside the integral I have x multiplied by e to the minus 0.01x dx. Now we figure this one out using partial integration, which is just oh so very much our favorite way to calculate things. So let us just write up the definition of partial integration uh, or a formula for that. So normally what we have is we have some interval from a to b of some function u multiplied by another function v. And the underlying assumption is one of them is already differentiated, the other one is not. And what partial integration tells us is that we can write this integral up as u of x multiplied by v of x, where v of x here is the antiderivative of this v prime up here, so in Danish stamfunktion, evaluated in b, minus the same expression evaluated in n, and then minus the integral from a to b over u prime of x, so u differentiated, multiplied by v not differentiated, dx. Now all of you might have different expressions for this, uh, depending on where you uh, learned this formula and where you went to high school, but this is my version of it, which I always get from Wikipedia.
So what we need to do here now is we kind of have to recognize what is our u, what is our v prime, what is our t uh, ten, and what is our uh, what what is our a and what is our b. So let's say that I let my x be my u of x, and I let this thing here be my v prime. And the reason for that is because if I do this, then over on the other side, inside the integral, I will have u prime of x, which is just 1, which means then I can get rid of my x inside the integral, and that's always nice. So let us try to use the formula. I have 0 0.01 out here, and then a big parenthesis. And what I have inside is I have u of x multiplied by the antiderivative of v prime of x. So u of x in my case is just x. And then I need to take the antiderivative of this. So which thing differentiated gives me e to the minus 0.01x. Now the thing differentiated that gives me this is 1 over minus 0 0.01 multiplied by e to the minus 0.01x. Because if I take that and differentiate, then the exponent of minus 0.01 goes down into the fraction, and then these two will cancel out. So this is what I want here. And I evaluate this in 100, and evaluate it in 10, and subtract. And then I want to say minus the integral from 10 to 100 of u prime of x. So u of x was equal to x. So u prime of x is just equal to 1. So that won't need to be here. But I can just write it anyways. Of u prime of x multiplied by v of x, which we just established was 1 over minus 0 0.01 multiplied by e to the minus 0 0.01. 0, 1, x dx. Oh my god, I hope I didn't make a mistake in this thing. Okay, let's just let, let it be like this. And then you guys can kind of evaluate this on your own.